Hello and welcome to Cosmeteer. Cosmeteer is a starship building game in early access. You can check it out on Steam. Let's jump into it. In this series, I'm making a, a set of ships that are meant to function together as a uh, as a unit in the career mode, uh, or even as a, an army, and perhaps some some struggles that we'll have later, some, some faction on faction conflicts. Um, today, I'm going to build something that's maybe not directly a combat ship. In fact, it's extremely not a direct combat ship because it's not going to have any weapons. I want to build a mining ship today. So in the career, you're going to run across the situation where you have this, this ship that's kind of an all-arounder, kind of like the Corvette that we built in last episode. Um, and it has some cargo capacity, some weapons, but really you're going to be taking it around completing bounties and, and doing objectives in the universe and the solar system that you're in. So a lot of times I find it useful to have a separate ship that is maybe a cleanup ship, right? So instead of doing all the salvaging of the ships you're destroying, you have this ship to come behind you and do that salvage. Uh, alternatively, uh, I like to make this kind of utility ship multi-purpose. I like to have it be a mining ship as well. So if I don't have any convenient salvage to, uh, to go about collecting, or maybe if I just don't need the components of that salvage, uh, this ship can go out and mine things. So unlike the previous episodes, I think I'm really just going to start from scratch on this one because we don't really want to, to model it after a combat ship. It needs to be a little different. Um, first of all, at this point in the campaign, you should make it a priority to unlock the mining laser. The mining laser is going to give you access to hard materials that exist on asteroids. You cannot mine those if you do not have a mining laser. Um, Basically, those minerals are either classified as soft, meaning that your crew can harvest them with hand lasers, or hard, in which case you need this laser. So that's an absolute must. The mining laser needs energy supplied to it, and that energy is quite a bit. Uh, luckily, the mining laser is not like other weapons in that it can actually fire through other tiles of your own ship. Kind of imagine it sitting on top of the ship, right? Um, there's one other weapon in the game that I know of that does this, and it's the deck cannon. Um, but the mining laser is is among those. Um, doesn't take that much energy. Let's have a look. 1.2 energy per second. A small reactor produces 1.5 energy per second. So a small reactor can support a mining laser fully. In addition, um, Whenever you're mining or salvaging, you're not going to be running your engines. You'll generally be sitting completely still. So we don't have to account for um, engine loadout or engine load on this reactor or on our energy requirements. So that's great. Uh, we also are going to need a pilot. So we'll need a cockpit. This is definitely not going to have that much control requirements. So we can place it here. Uh, because it's not a combat ship, I don't have to worry too much about... Um, defending this cockpit because our strategy is run away <laughs> if if we get an enemy contact on our radar we are running away uh, sensors i suppose all right so that's it for the absolute necessities um we do need some crew uh, i'll attach the crew directly to the um power and you know actually i think it'd be good to go with a crew of 12 for this ship and the reason is because, um, not because necessarily you need this many crew to run the systems, but because uh, salvaging material from space is a very manual labor, right? E each crew member has to get in the airlock, head out, um, pick up the material, bring it back to your ship, um, and then repeat the whole process, occasionally even refilling their air along the way. So we do need quite a bit of crew for these to be able to clean up uh, salvage effectively and in addition we need um, quite a bit of crew to supply the mining laser and also to operate the mining laser there's one crew member to operate and uh, maybe two or three crew members will need to be supplying it with energy as it's as it's working to be really efficient um, we'll have some doorways here and I think we do need thrusters of course uh, and thrusters should be kind of a priority for our budget on this thing. You know, we need to be able to get out of dodge quickly if an enemy ship comes around. 
But that said, we don't need too much in the way of maneuvering thrusters. Um, we need to be able to reverse, certainly. Uh, something that happens when you're dealing with scrap that doesn't move around or an asteroid is that you can run headfirst into it, and without any reverse thrust, you're just going to be kind of stuck, right? Awkwardly trying to spin the front of your, the nose of your ship off of the asteroid. Not a situation that's efficient time-wise or that we want to be in. Um, so we do need some rotational thrust. That should be fine. Uh, and we do need some reverse thrust. We can get into that whenever we build out our cargo containers. Um, speaking of which, I think um, maybe I want to move all of this down by one just so that we have a corridor space where crew can move efficiently and distribute power to all of these. Uh, this will also give us a little space for our um, air hatches or external hatch. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. And again, I'm going to stick to the one hatch for this ship. Um, Putting one on either side might be slightly faster, but uh, generally they only need to use it once and then whenever they come back to refuel on their oxygen, any other time they actually take the cargo from an asteroid or a ship directly into the cargo bay. You'll see the cargo bay open into space and the uh, red shirts will drop it in. So that's where we are for now. Um, I guess I could put a fire extinguisher on the other side. It, it really is not necessary here, but I feel like it's a requirement on any ship. Um, maybe they'll just <laughs> make those red shirts feel a little more at home, right? All right, now let's uh, get into the meat and potatoes of what we want to be doing here. Cargo. I want as much cargo space as possible. Um, I think I can easily fit in quite a bit. Hmm. Let's move these guys up. And we can put a reverse thrust right here. That's looking okay. And we will use our cargo a little bit more to the side. That looks good. Right, turn back on the mirror mode. Awesome. All right. Um, and okay, everything else that we're doing for styling, we're going to do this by, uh, you know, I'm not too happy with this. Um, I, I think this is a perfect little gap here for an air hatch and for a um, fire extinguisher. So let's let's do that. So I'll just move it. And we'll put in some doors. Doors like this. Um, okay. Get rid of these. And not looking too bad. Um, I think for the front of our ship here, let's have a cargo container mm, maybe a couple like that Ooh, that's kind of neat and we're not making a fly though we're making a bee um a little bit of 12 storage that looks good um and Finish out the wings, maybe like such. Hmm. You know, that is almost functional. Let's see if we can't put a thruster, a little bit more thruster for reverse thrust here. Ooh, that is painfully close to being just exactly uh, fitting here. 
I can either move the entire cargo section up or I could do away with this small thruster and have this be here. Or I could keep the small thruster and just have them walk through one tile of engine room. You know what? I like that pretty good. It gives a strong reverse thrust. Um, actually, I could put a two-way thruster here. Yeah, that's even better. Now we've got side thrust, reverse thrust, lots of forward thrust to get out of dodge, uh, a general shape of a B, uh, and then what's going to be really important here on the front is actually adding quite a bit of armor, um, and on the rear as well. I don't want this cargo getting shot off during travel, so let's add a bit of armor. I like, I've been liking this armor where it kind of rises um, around, I guess, the shoulder of the wing uh, and then curves around to the back. I feel like that's functional and effective. See, it gives us a nice little bit of armor here around the sides. Um, same on the front. And in this area, we're absolutely going to max this out with armor. I want strong armor. Let's see, it should have been mirroring all along, but it's okay. Oh, we are having a bias of the mirror line because it's um, it's reading all this extra mass on the side of the ship as part of the mirror. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I think what I'd like to do is maybe have this be a little more flat so that we can add our antenna. Hmm. Not bad. Okay, back to styling the armor on the bottom piece here. Um, oh, it looks like his cheek is missing out some armor. Let's uh, remedy that. And, you know, that's not enough. I want more armor here. the sides is going to be one of the main places that we might take some hits. Um, looking all right. Plenty of um, plenty of storage space. We've got our functional mining laser, good crew quarters. Hey, we even gave him a fire extinguisher. Functionally, I think we're there. Um, yeah, I like the look of that one. Uh, it would be great to be able to put some armor on the back of the ship. Uh, the problem is that whatever armor we add, we lose thrust. So it's a, it's a clear trade-off of do we value uh, thrusters and just getting away or being able to take a few hits a little more. I feel like if a, if a ship can stay with us, we're doomed, no matter what. Uh, we have absolutely no way to fight back, so the thrust is more important. Um, that kind of calls into question, is this armor even necessary, right? Uh, um, you know, I think uh, dropping maybe this second row of armor might be worthwhile, but I, I just don't feel nice about having no armor on this, this front section of the ship. Um, I could do like some really wacky draping armor around the back if I was trying to, to be super efficient. I could put in some armor, like go to two thrusters and put some armor here so that at least those two thrusters are protected, um, but leave all these side thrusters off. I could change the configuration of this so that there's armor on the side of the thrusters that goes down. Um, I don't really love any of that for the theming of a bee though. 
I guess the side draped armor here could look like a stinger. That's kind of neat. Um, you know, I'm going to call it good enough. I think uh, 131, we're already getting pretty generous with our cost. Uh, let's make this thing exist. Make sure that everybody can fuel up their areas of the ship. Now, I don't know if I can actually spawn a asteroid. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Let's spawn a large uranium asteroid, just to give you an idea of what this might look like. Large carbon. Very nice. Okay. Uh, and while we get all... Oh, already powered up. Fantastic. Um, let's make sure we can spin. That's fine. Let's see what the top speed of this thing is. I'm hoping for somewhere around 80 to 90 meters per second. Hmm. It's a little slow, to be honest. Uh, okay, let's add some more engines. We can definitely afford them via uh, our power needs. Uh, I don't think I can add anything there. I can move this out a couple if I go about also adding some engines there. Not bad. It, it's it's inefficient. I, I'll tell you, it's inefficient for to have the uh, energy suppliers have to walk through essentially uh, four tiles of half speed. But um, efficiency isn't much of an issue here because honestly, I mean, we've got 12 crew members whose entire job, they're not operating shields. They're, uh, well, I guess we have two assigned to the cockpit and the mining laser. So those 10 crew members, their entire job is to distribute power to these engines uh, that really don't even need it that often. Um, you know, they'll burn for a long while without, without running into any issue. Let's... Get those up and running. Now let's see what our new max speed is with those extra two large thrusters. All right, yeah, we're smoking. We're at 82.8. Um, in case you didn't know, cargo being empty or full does not affect the mass of your ship, doesn't affect how much thrust you need to move through space. Um, and space in this game acts more like water than space. You know, it's not that your thrust is going to be continually added to the speed of your ship. You have a max speed and then uh, the thrust is working against some <laughs> friction in space. Uh, so, really fun game. Of course, it to be really fun, they need to not be really real realistic. Uh, one of my very clear um, examples of that is if you destroy a ship in this game, its uh, debris will eventually stop moving. Otherwise, chasing around that debris in space is absolutely a nightmare. So if we set our ship to mine all of this material, you'll notice that the mining laser chooses a, uh, a position on the asteroid and it's gonna, it looks like it's going to be mining out these carbon deposits here. Uh, also, looking at the mining laser, it has a firing arc that really goes from kind of bottom left to bottom right of your ship. So if I turn this, um, it's actually going to be able to mine out most of all three of these asteroids. Uh, so I could just set this here on the campaign and, you know, go away to do my bounties on my other ship while this thing is working, right? It allows you to uh, make money in a semi-passive way, right? And passive income is always nice. Uh, you'll see that, like I said before, the crew members are actually gathering the materials and dropping them in the cargo bay directly. With the internal view of the ship off, you can see the, the cargo bay door is opening as they deposit the material. Also, every once in a while, they'll run out of oxygen. When they do that, you'll see them come back to the hatch here and uh, get more oxygen and continue their work. I think the other thing I mentioned earlier is that there are mineral patches that are hard. So see this hard deposit right here of carbon? They would not be able to mine this with their hand tools as they are doing here on this soft material. Um, soft. So that is why a mining laser is absolutely necessary. Also, just look at how much faster it can chew through an asteroid. I mean, it's taking out a tile every second where these guys take quite a long time. It also helps with salvaging ships. If you salvage a ship with a mining laser, it's going to destroy those components a little faster than the uh, 
the people can with their hand tools. All right, so last but not least, let's give this thing a paint job. Uh, again, I'm gonna start with a base paint of black. Actually, let's load our scheme from last time. Is this it? Looks like it. No, that is not it. All right, let's go with yellow on this. And we're gonna do our stripes. You know, another good thing about adding those engines to the back is it gives this bee a little bit more of an abdomen. Uh, okay. On the head, I think we're gonna go with something else. We need white on the wings. <laughs> the wings being full of cargo container is actually uh, kind of neat as well. You would think of a, a cargo bee ship as really needing to be able to carry this material efficiently. So I do like that little bit of uh, happenstance. Um, you know, looking at the shape of this too, uh, let's let's move these back. Why not? Um, yeah, we're being a little inefficient with the uh, corridor here, but I like the look of it. That's much nicer. Um, it looks like, you know, we've kind of found eyes on all of the other... Uh, ships it's looking kind of like maybe these cargo container here is our eyes for this time um we can give them a quirky little actual eyeball not bad uh and then let's give something to highlight that uh, just something to go around the edges this guy Okay. Um, what about a little, little thin accent on the top there? It's probably nothing like that. It really would be. Hmm. Any type of half. Mm, not looking great. <laughs> Eyebrows, sweet. If there's one thing I know about bees, it's that they have eyebrows. Glorious eyebrow game amongst bees. Uh, and his teeth. Sure, those can be teeth. Not bad. You know, I like it. Uh, and so this whole time I've been painting, you know, I've been making money. I just set this thing and forget it. Uh, this is absolutely an essential ship to have in um, campaign mode. I see a lot of people combine this with a factory ship, and that's fine too. A factory ship is basically one that holds this cargo but also uh, has all the material the factory needs to transform the raw material into whatever you know building materials you might use or sell i actually prefer to have them separate because i can spend a large amount of thrust on the mining ship and have it be mining slash salvage and to be able to get away in case it's attacked and then I have a separate ship that stays near the space station, and that separate ship's ability is basically uh, not to move at all. It might have a hyperdrive so that I can move it in broad strokes around the system that it's in, uh, and so that I can take it to the next solar system. But in general, it just sits near the station and does its uh, uh, processing of this raw material that the miner is bringing in. Uh, both. In my campaigns, I like both this ship and the processor factory ship to have 12 crew members. That way they can transfer uh, very efficiently between them. And yeah, I think that does it for today. Maybe tomorrow we'll build that stationary factory ship that I was uh, speaking of just now so that we can see how this one and that one might interact in a, in a career setting. Uh, anyway, that's it for today. Thank you and have a good day.